Yesterday, we learned that Trump had himself apparently told national security secrets to Russians. And we look at the fallout in our recurring segment, Moscow in the Middle. So here's what we know. Last week, President Trump uh, met with Russian diplomats and reportedly told them classified information about an ISIS terror plot. And we know that that information came from a foreign ally who did not want the U.S. to share it with the Russians because they know you don't want Russians in your business. How are we not getting this? How are we still confused by this? No one wants Russians getting information. It doesn't matter what the information is. It could be a surprise party that your friend told you about. If you tell the Russians, it's not gonna end well. Your friend <laughs> is gonna wash up on the beach without his head, and you'll be like, but this has nothing to do with the Russians. And the Russians will be like, yeah, why take the risk? You never know. <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> you said, uh... You said you want surprise, now you're surprised. <laughs> oh, look, don't get me wrong. Everyone gossips. It's fun, and as every high school freshman knows, it makes you popular and, like, super cool. <laughs> the problem is, when a president gossips, the stakes can be pretty high. Outrage in Washington and beyond over these new reports that President Trump may have revealed highly classified information during his Oval Office meeting with Russian officials. What President Trump has done has betrayed that core premise that allows us to have relationships around the world. The real danger beyond infuriating this close ally is that our friends and partners will think once, they'll think twice. Maybe they won't share information with us at all. We rely on our allies around the world to give us information. If we can't show at the highest levels of government that we can be trusted to safeguard that information, then we jeopardize our access to that information. That's right. Trump is basically like the one guy who didn't know that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> And instead, the second he got home, he posts all the pictures on Instagram and then, like, tags you and your wife in it. And guess what? Now I'm divorced, Brian! <laughs> this is where we see the, the whole idea of Trump is a lie. The whole idea of Trump is a lie. Even by his own standards, right? He's complete bull <laughs> What did Trump preach during the campaign? Protecting America from terrorism at all costs. And how does America do that? By gathering and acting on very sensitive and confidential information from friends and allies around the world. What's gonna happen now? America's gonna get shut out because no one can trust the president not to spill their secrets whenever he has his friends come over for a play date. <laughs> and here's how you know the story's a big deal. For the first time since the election, Republican leaders seem to be having buyer's remorse. Republican Senator Bob Corker, a Trump supporter, telling journalists the White House is in a downward spiral. Senator Susan Collins quipped to reporters, can we have a crisis-free day? That's all I'm asking. Well, if it's true, obviously, it's disturbing. Obviously, if it's, a, it's not, a, not a good thing. <laughs> if it's just not a, it's not, a, not, a good, not a good thing. You know things are bad when you're describing your president's actions the same way you describe the love child of an incestuous couple, you know? <laughs> no, don't blame me. I just saw the promo for Game of Thrones, people. Don't judge me. <laughs> I'm a victim of my culture, people! <laughs> also, also, by the way, uh, the highest-ranking member of the Trump administration, he also jumped to Trump's defense. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Fox News, yes? Uh, <laughs> they've fallen back on the excuse that they give every time damaging information leaks about Trump. Fix these dang leaks! I have a message for those who work in that house, the White House, enough with the self-serving leaks. The leaks inside this administration are hurting both their functioning and the security of this country. Mm -hmm. Whoever's leaking at the Washington Post, what they're doing is even worse. Baby, it's not about me cheating on you, it's that these hoes ain't loyal. <laughs> we gotta get to the bottom of this together. You and me, baby. We gotta find these leaks. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. Leaks are not the biggest problem here. If there was blood dripping down from the apartment above me, my main concern wouldn't be patching up my ceiling. It would be, what the f is that creep doing up there in 12B? <laughs> so, here we are once again, people. The eternal question, is Trump incompetent 
or did he purposefully collude with the Russians to give them information? Nobody knows. <laughs> I do have a theory, though. I have a theory. I do think the reason Donald Trump loves the Russians is because their accent reminds him of Melania. <laughs> yeah. So, after the Russians left the Oval Office, he probably called Melania like, hello, current wife. <laughs> I just talked to your dad. Tremendous guy, great guy. <laughs> Told him all of America's secrets. And Melania was like, Donald, for the last time, I'm not a Russian, I'm Slovenian. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I got it. Big Russia, little Russia, got it. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you later. Another one of your dads just walked in. <laughs> By the way, when are you moving into the what? Hello? Hello? <laughs> okay, love you, bye. Love you, bye. Hello? Mr. President, how are you? Yes, of course. Oh, you want me to let people know they can watch full episodes of The Daily Show for free anytime with the Comedy Central app or at thedailyshow.com? Yes, of course. Yes, I know I'm fake news. All right. Love you too. Bye-bye.